Hey, this is Trout Bitten. Thanks for joining me. Let's talk about the golden ratio for tight line and Euro nymphing. Now, on a mono rig style, on a Euro nymphing leader, on any long leader system, we should acknowledge the limited range where our presentations are most effective. That's one rod length over and two rod lengths up. That's what we call the golden ratio of nymphing. Now, that's the baseline for everything else. It's the foundation for getting great presentations and for making the most of the tight line advantage, for getting good dead drifts and for getting fish to eat. So let me show you what I really believe is the most important concept in tight line nymphing. Are you ready? Here we go. Look at the way that guy walks. So let's talk about a dead drift. I think everybody would agree. Uh, your baseline presentation, your most important presentation is a real dead drift on a nymph. Now what is the most important part of a dead drift? I'm gonna say it's keeping everything in one lane, in one seam. So that you think about it like on a dry fly, same thing. If you see your dry fly coming across, you know it's not a dead drift. Our dry fly starts in one lane, finishes in one lane. My buddy Austin on a podcast not too long ago put it this way. He said it's like an Olympic swimming pool with lanes. And so you want to start, if you start in lane one, you better end up in lane one. Wherever you put your nymph, it needs to end up in that same lane. It starts in that lane, it finishes in the same lane. I'm watching some of these bubbles and I see that I'm watching this bubble coming downstream. It's not coming off track, it, that's the lane. Just like a dry fly, we want the same thing to happen underneath. That's really important. Let me show you what I mean. All right, I have a midstream rock. Of course, the current is being split, and you have the far seam and the near seam. I'm gonna put it to the left, yep, just to the left of that thick seam there coming off of that rock. And I start in lane one. You can see this. We'll highlight it on the screen for you. Everything goes in lane one. The fly, the tippet, the cider is over top of lane one, and my rod tip, importantly, is over top of lane one. Everything is staying in the same lane all the way down. Now, if I want to fish the next lane over, say I want to hit that soft part, what I should do is wade right there, and I can get the same angle. It would be a mistake, but we all do it, to put it over, I missed it, put it over in that soft stuff. And now you watch, I'm gonna try real hard not to have much contact, but it's already tracked over probably a foot by the time I get to the back end. Seriously, it came over two, three, probably four or five feet. Started over there, came across. It's not a dead drift that way. So I accidentally am starting in lane two, and there's not even much tension, but it's already come across a foot, two feet. I have almost no tension there. It's three feet, four feet across. Not your best angle. So it really has everything to do with the rod tip. The most important thing is to keep that rod tip over top of the same lane that your flies are in, over top of lane one. You can't help it. On a tight line system, it's always gonna track toward the rod. Now that doesn't mean we're always tight and we're just pulling things through. Even when we're trying to kind of slip out of contact, slip in, slip out, even when we don't have that hard contact, it's still gonna track toward your rod tip. That's a good thing and a bad thing. It's only a bad thing if you go outside of your rod range. Now what's your rod range? This is the way I like to do it. I literally take the tip of my rod and touch touch the water. Now I'm touching bubbles right there. Now where did those bubbles come from? I'm following that lane up with my eyes and right there's my lane. Now anywhere in that lane I could cast. We'll talk about the other part of this golden ratio in a minute. The first thing we've been talking about is one rod length over. We'll talk about how far up we cast, which is the second variable. But here I am again, right? One lane because my rod tip is out in that same lane. And as I, wanna, as, I, as I wanna fish lane two, here I am, I'm moving over. Because look, now I'm touching that soft piece, which is right up there. That's where the water comes from. And I'm within my rod reach. So it's always gonna track toward the rod tip, no matter what you do. So I don't like to be outside of my rod reach. Now I'm walking back here because I'm gonna show you something. When I say fish upstream, people often think I mean straight upstream. And it's possible, it's okay, we can do this. I'm gonna show you something, try not to stick everything on the bottom. Um, 
When I say fish upstream, what I really mean is what, what I've been showing you, upstream but one rod length over in that lane. If I fish straight upstream at you, all I can do is lift the rod. I can also do line hand. We do all kinds of retrieves. I'm just keeping it simple mostly today, I'm not doing a lot of line hand. But my point here is if I cast straight upstream, you see if I take the rod over here, I'm gonna bring it off track. Do it the other way next time, straight upstream. If I bring the rod over this way to lead, I'm gonna bring it off track. If I cast straight upstream then, I don't have anywhere to lead it. You saw that when I was casting over here at this one rod length away, I get to lead past, almost past me. I like to pick it up when it's right across from me. This is much more comfortable. This is efficient. This is how I can get a longer drift and really maximize that distance. But again, if I cast right at you, I am lifting the whole time. Some of this right about there, I gotta end it, right? I have nowhere to go. I have nowhere to really lead it. It's fine to fish straight upstream. It's not, it's not my favorite thing to do. All right, most people wanna fish across stream, kind of a 45 to a 45, instead of facing upstream and doing what we were just doing. Most people wanna cast uh, across stream, face across, fish across. You know, and I'm going 45 up, and you watch that cider, it's pointing to my flies, and my flies have already crossed five, six feet. They're in a completely different lane than what they started. And I mean, even if I let that drift go all the way down, oh my gosh, it's way across. That's a bad cross lead. Now again, you're gonna find fish, that that's the thing for the day. There are lots of places where that's gonna work all day long. Well, not a lot of places. <laughs> Every so often, you're gonna find that a cross lead is actually your better presentation. I'm not saying you never do this, but we wanna know what's happening. And really, our golden ratio is, is, is our best baseline, put it that way. Here, I'm casting 45 degrees up. It's already come over two or three it, two or three feet. It has to track toward my rod tip, and it does. Hey, before we move into the second part of this golden ratio, I wanna thank Squala for sponsoring this video. I've been working with Squala for a couple of years now, and I have a ton of respect for what they're doing in the industry. Squala is building some of the finest fly fishing gear on the market with new and innovative designs that just keep coming. From the thermo line of merino wool tops and bottoms to the sun shirts like the Soul Tactical hoodie to their jackets, insulation, and waders, Squala keeps hitting the mark over and over. Squala gear is built for die-hard anglers. Gear designed by fishermen and built for fishing. All right, so these are Squala's new back eddy waders, and I just got these in yesterday. They need some dirt on them. I wore the prototype for these waders for about 20 days. Really loved them. I have the carbon waders. That's what Josh is wearing right there. And I have the RS. Uh, these are great because they have a pass-through pocket. That's a big deal to me. I, I don't really care about having a zipper in the front. I love the pass-through. Uh, more pockets up here. There's pockets inside. The suspender is different. Cool design. Also, then, you don't have buckles up here on your collarbone. That's real nice. And I don't know if anybody told you, but this pocket is for your beer right here. It's a nice beer pocket. But really, these waders have the fit in the fabric of the RS wader. Um, and they have that characteristic functionality that Squala has in everything they make. They just feel good. So for you trout bit and regulars, Squala's offering a 10% discount code. Go to squalafishing.com, use the code TROUTBITTEN10. Thanks to Squala, and thanks to everybody out there for supporting this trout bitten project. So fly fishing is kind of a close range system. I mean, that's fair. If you want real distance, you're gonna use a spinning rod or a gear rod, well, to get yourself further out there. And then nymphing, is an even closer range system. That's fair too. And tight line nymphing is your closest range system of anything that you're gonna do on a fly rod. And so that leads us to the second part of this golden ratio. The first part is we are one rod length over, yep. Then how far up? Two rod lengths up. Two rod lengths up is our baseline. Let's talk about that. So two rod lengths is pretty close. That's good. It's a tight line system. We're trying to be close. Good things happen at close range. You're more accurate you have better strike detection, you have control over the system. You can see into the water, not in this clarity, but lots of times we can see into the water. You know, the closer we are, the more we see, the more then we know about how to drift our flies. Also, if I hang up at close range, so what? I just take a couple steps, pop it free, and then I'm on to the next target with just a few steps. If my range is a lot further out there, then I'm disappointed that I have to blow up so much water or I have to break off. So two rod lengths upstream, I say it that way because rod length really factors in. So does your body size and your arm length and things like that. So for me, I have a 10 foot rod. So that's about 20 feet away. That's what I wanna be, casting about 20 feet away. One rod length over and then about 20 feet upstream. 
Now, most of us are a really bad judge at what 20 feet is, right? So a really good way to measure this is just grab the line. Within the, within the rod, I have 10 feet. So 10 feet going up, 10 feet coming back, and I got a little bit more. So when I say 20 feet away or two rod lengths upstream, I'm talking about from where I'm standing. So I'm standing here, I'm gonna cast about 20 feet upstream. About 10 feet over, 10, 12 feet over is, is within my rod reach. And then about 20 feet upstream. Again, I can measure it this way, right? 10 up, 10 back, and then a little bit more. Let's talk about why we want a little bit more. Because when I cast out there, I'm not trying to lay everything just flat out. I'm not stretching everything out, right? Because I'm gonna get a tough cast. I got some arc in the leader like this. That takes away some distance. Also, I don't, I don't lay my rod out like this. I tend to stop it about here, so that's also taking away some distance. So if I just had purely 20 feet, 10 up and 10 back, I wouldn't be casting 20 feet out there. I'd probably be casting 16 feet out there or something. So that's why I go 10 up, 10 back, and about four more feet. That works for me. That gets me to that two rod lengths upstream distance. So why does all this matter? Why two rod lengths away and not more? If you go too far out, you take away your tight line advantage. If you go too far out, you start to get leader sag. And that's gonna equal drag, it puts you out of control. I think of it this way. I think of it as a, as a triangle, an isosceles triangle, where this is the same as this, right? And so here's my rod, and then here's my leader. And what you have is a 90 degree angle there. I have 10 feet up on my rod, and then about 10 feet a leader. A little bit more, we just talked about that. And this triangle is my starting position. And I'm good with this angle. I can cast light nymphs even, even like just 15 centigrams on a number 16 beadhead pheasant tail. And I'm not gonna get any leader sag at this angle. Now as I drift, I might lift the rod and everything's coming back. I get an even more narrow angle and then I might lead through, okay? But this is my starting angle. Now if I go further out, then this is my starting angle. You see what I mean? Again, rod and leader. Now the leader starts to sag. And then that, that's, that's gonna bring your drag in. And like I said, you're gonna be out of contact. You're not necessarily gonna get the presentations that you want. Now, let me point this out. You can absolutely go further upstream than two rod lengths, but you wanna do it on purpose and know what the consequences might be. You could also decide to float something on the water and you're not really tight lining necessarily at that point. You're, you're allowing the, something to be on the surface, whether that's an indie or you could float the cider for the first couple parts of the drift, but that's another whole thing to talk about. So this is where leader build can really come in. Like I said, with the standard rig, that 90 degree triangle works really well, even with lighter weights. If I go to a thin butt section, like a 10 pound maximum chameleon, I could probably get two extra feet on my distance, my maximum distance. If I go to a micro thin, like a five pound butt section, I can probably get another two, another two feet on that distance. But we have to acknowledge that all leaders Eventually, I mean, there's only so much distance, right, to a tight line system. And everything falls, everything, you know, gravity's pulling it down. So even a micro rig sags, they all sag. And we just have to deal with that. You can also counteract that sag by adding a little bit of extra weight. Could be split shot, could be just a heavier fly. There's a lot of different ways to do things. All right, there's one big reason why many anglers don't approach the river this way. And it's because if I bring that drift, if I just keep it going, if I try to go past myself, like I'm just, I'm that close to the fish. Those trout know that I'm here, just one rod length away. Not so much in today's water conditions, but under average conditions, those trout know I'm here. And as I waded upstream, as I came upstream, I was, I, I've spooked that fish and I've spooked that fish and I've spooked that fish. That's okay, because I was behind them when I fished. But as I do this golden ratio, as I just fish within this golden ratio kind of approach, I've surrendered all of that water down there. Now, I want to fish, you know, a 45 to 45. Um, I'll, I'll let it go out past me, but I have to be further out, out of my rod range. I'm not just one rod length away. So if I really want to get these drifts that, you know, long drifts that go all the way downstream, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, and then cast again, I kind of have to be outside of that one rod length away, and then I'm not in my golden ratio anymore. This approach also requires just a lot of wading. If I do want to get that bank seam, I'm coming over here to get it. Instead of casting a cross over to that bank seam, I'm coming over. And now I'm one rod length away and two rod lengths up right there. Now again, this is the baseline. You can do a lot of different things, but this 
Uh, this is the heart of the whole thing. This is what your foundation should be built on. So we're out here now on day two, uh, shooting with a drone this time. Wanted to get some overhead shots to really show you what we mean by the golden ratio. So here, look, I mean, if I reach out one rod length over is right there, right? That's what I can, that's what I can fish effectively, most effectively, put it right in the soft lane. Now I'm one rod length over leading it right down toward my rod tip. That's just perfect, right? I have a great chance at staying in one lane. Well, if I'm careful, well, yeah, I can keep everything in that soft lane. If I want to reach that other lane, I'm not going to go further out than my rod tip can reach. Look what I'm tapping. It's not, I can't get clear out to that fast lane. So I'm gonna take a step over and I can, I can get, yep, that next lane over, which is faster. Now you can kind of get lost in this kind of water because there's not as many distinct lanes and distinct seams. I'm just gonna work on through here and keep taking, taking a step over every couple drifts, right? Staying within my rod tip range. Hey now, one rod length over, two rod lengths up. Hey now. Got a fish. And I'm not there. Better hold on to it. That might be the only one you get today. Shut up. Broke the ice, baby. That's one more than you. Please nobody take that while I'm fishing. Uh, stick with it a little bit longer and then just stop catching the dinks and you'll be able to catch fish like that. Gosh. <laughs> Drop shot egg. Drop shot egg. Lower longer. Two on the board for Mr. Swintowski. <laughs> That's two more than you. That is two more than me. <laughs> <laughs> Secret egg pattern. Caught two, so I was thinking though, when I was a kid and even when I, just when I was younger, I'd be like, if I, I don't know, I fished for 20 minutes, caught 20 minutes caught two fish that's good that's really good I mean I'm happy with that but it may I'm I don't know I've been fishing long enough now it makes me want to change I'm like oh maybe I could do better and they, but nothing ate the tag up top Every, you know both fish and there were a couple spots I fished and I thought those are good drifts but they didn't eat it you know it's like sometimes though I think I definitely change too much that's for sure maybe it's because of social media I don't know everybody has these expectations like you're gonna come out and catch you gotta catch 20 fish every time 50 fish every time, or else no good. Out here a couple days ago, caught 65 fish. <laughs> 67. Yeah. It was a little slower than last week. <laughs> I kind of get that feeling sometimes people want to catch a fish in every spot. I mean, I want to. It doesn't happen. The reality is not that way. All right, that's the golden ratio of tight line nymphing. One over, two rod lengths up. And yeah, you're gonna come out of it. But you wanna have a really good reason for why you're not within that golden ratio. And then you're gonna, well, make a plan. Do it with intention and know what the consequences are. If you're casting further out than the rod can reach, you're gonna get cross lead. If you're casting further up, um, you're gonna get leader sag. But you're gonna do it on purpose sometimes. It's gonna work, you're gonna catch fish that way too. There are so many other things that add up to great nymphing skills. But really, it starts right there in that golden ratio. All right, fish hard, friends. Have fun. Get that out for me. Go ahead, go get that for me. A good guide would have gotten that snag out for me. A good fisherman wouldn't have put it in the tree in the first place. I'm working on it. If you already knew, why'd you ask? I figured. I just figured it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. Aiden Hutchinson. Hey, this is Trout Pitten. Thanks for joining me. Let's talk about, what are we gonna talk about? One more time, Dom. Uh, the underneath rock is, one more time. Is splitting the water. One more time. And you got the left seam over there. One more time. One more time. One more time. 
time. One more time. Well, these have the. Mm -hmm. One more time. One more time. I can. One more time. I mean, I think that's fair. One more time. Sorry, Josh. That's done.